Welcome back to the grim darkness of the 41st millennium. I'm Inquisitor Temperance Price, Keeper of the Inquisition's Black Library, and this is the third volume in a report on the Valentine Heresy, an actual play podcast set in the Genesis adaptation of Warhammer 40,000's Dark Heresy RPG. This report features Game Master Tom McGee and players Ryan LaPlante as Inquisitor Lucius Valentine, Tyler Hewitt as Atticus Viz, Laura Hamstra as Eli Sharp, and Della Borovic as Morgan Rawls. My report shows that the Inquisitorial Band are about to attend a wedding. Morgan and Eli uncovered the conspiracy and murdered Kiros and Versailles after collecting damning evidence of their crimes, while Valentine and Atticus picked out wedding attire. But are there any other dastardly plans afoot that could ruin Atticus's wedding? Find out next in this episode of the Valentine Heresy. Deleted recording some months ago. Now, of course, if we do this, we both need to be all in, as they say. Of course, darling, I think we can both safely say we want to pull this off, but the key is we need to be able to go all the way on this. And I don't care if you've got some reservations about what that means. I need you to trust me. Of course, I trust you, Kiros. You trust me? Of course, Lord Versailles. Let's make ourselves the head of Greybridge. Two houses, both alike in dignity, in blood in a cabin where we lay our scene. Uh, the, the morning has come. The news has broken that both Kuros and Versailles uh, have been found dead in a uh, cabin on the edge of the Kuros estate. And holy shit, not what people were expecting on the first day and only day of winter. Uh, There is snow outside. It is piled high. This is weirdly one of the easier ones for the Cloud Palace to generate based on old Terran fix a skiing slope real quick technology. Uh, So (laughs) there's, you know, frost on the windows. There is snow packed outside. No one is outside enjoying it because curfew hasn't broken yet. Uh, But the sun has risen on winter um, here in Greybridge. So... Uh, you have plans in place. Um, a very tired uh, Hugh Smiggleton arrives back with uh, a bunch of different orders that have been put through on Rush. However, when I heard that they would be similar to the Met Gala, like having knowing that these outfits would be worn uh, by the the future Duke's consort, uh, they were done right quick. Uh, so Atticus, your, your outfit has arrived. Um, Morgan and Eli, you got an actual sleep. Hmm. Uh, Morgan, I don't know if you're still hurting for strain. I am hurting for HP and strain. <laughs> okay, well, oh you can regain one HP from your sleep, Woo-hoo. and uh, you can regain two strain. Eli, I assume you're still fine. I'm doing great. Untouchable. <laughs> yep. Great. Uh, so you wake up and <laughs> void stain. Like, in any way, so that's my theory. Do we do we do we take a sleep now? Or what, what are we thinking? <laughs> you left him talking all night. You you didn't fall asleep at all. You asked me to unfold my theories on on the planet, so I've just been working. Were you? <laughs> so canonically, you're looking at a man under a blanket. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> I just need to paint this picture just for myself. A slightly <laughs> moving mound. All right, she's gonna she's gonna scoop him up in the blanket. <laughs> oh, take him over to the bed and put oh. him in the bed. Oh my, and, this and, is advancing and, rather quickly. And tuck him in. Get some rest now before we have to leave. What, what about you and Clarence? You've both been up all night too, working on the case with me. Yes, we are so very hardened from our time and space, but you need to get some shot eye. Oh, okay. Eli looks like disbelieving at him. Like, is this, wait, is he not? <laughs> He's still in our blanket, what so. <laughs> Technically, he got know. scooped up in a blanket like he was a bag of garbage. <laughs> <and> <laughs> <set in> a <laughs> ba- <laughs> I was imagining a bodyguard lift, but I like yours more. <laughs> <laughs> Just put him in the bed. Okay, well, no, he's already out. <sighs> yeah, the main thing that we have to do before the wedding is we have to go get clothes. We don't have any winter clothes, but Morgan would want to go take Clarence and go get some shopping for some clothes for the yeah. three of them using the stolen artifact from the Vault Song Manor <laughs> to pay for clothes. Hell yeah. That's some good resourcefulness right there. <laughs> I have one of these. Give me clothes. 
It yeah. still has the Price is Right sticker on it. <laughs> yeah. 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 Normally, you know, they, they're like, well, normally this isn't how we do business, but this is apparently worth, he looks at the tag, he's like, worth quite a bit. So yes, come in. I understand you need winter clothes. Precisely. For myself, my man, and she's like, oh my, God. my diminutive consort who <laughs> is not here right now. Would that be... Lord Voidstain? If you have his measurements, then yes. Oh, I can take a guess. I just heard on the, the latest Lizardman letter that uh, the two of you had been seen together. That is quite a thing. Yes, I, I do believe I could attempt something for him. Uh, but, and he looks at the price tag and he's like, I, this will, uh, it's going to be tight, but it, it will do. Mm -mm. It's a very Pawn Stars like, I can sell it for $8 million, but I'll give you $2 yeah. for it. It's a loss to me. Mm -hmm. So he, he takes the, the vase, puts it down, and yeah, yeah, you can go you can go get your, your winter Gosh. your winter outfits. Uh, what uh, what are your winter outfits like as we continue to play dress up in our grim dark space adventure? I think in this case, if we could we could hand it over to, to Eli for picking out stuff, maybe something that'll be winterized and also things we need to hide guns in. I think the only thing that Morgan right. would want would be a side cape just a one shoulder cape that she can then sling the sniper rifle under and keep it and carry it around but yep. yeah i think the order of business is um the bulkier the better um so it's like a, a, a very traditional suit for clarence but with a um overly large cape mm -hmm. that um not pleats but kind of curved <laughs> what's what's the word i'm looking for uh, fold like just with a lot of folds in it. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Kind sure. of. Pleats sounds um, right too. Uh, and like inner pockets and stuff. Uh, in a black with silver lining. Yep. And trim. Uh, and then for Morgan, it will be something. I would say similar. Mm -hmm. based on what Clarence picked out Eli picked out that yeah. they would all be matching and doing mm -hmm. that dark black with silver and Morgan's outfit would be similar to a suit with like the, the waistcoat mm -hmm. but really short and then boots that are above her knees so the, the stuff that you can wear in winter and trudge through things and then it it would be I guess the opposite for void stain a more silver suit with black mm. on the inside oh, okay. so we all match but we have cool. kind of a different vibe sure. going on with I just wanted the black because it would be easier to hide like bulges in a black versus yep. like a shiny silver <laughs> and that's fine so void stain could be the shiny <laughs> one and then color. we'll have the darker have colored anymore, yes. Yeah. yes yes exactly he, he is trained in the blade but that's fine he'll, he'll figure it out <laughs> trained in the blade <laughs> <laughs> fucking that's perfect oh man yeah okay great so you you get all that you're well equipped. Um, and you are you are ready for for whatever the day is going to throw at you. Mm -hmm. uh, meanwhile, back at the Van Houten estate, Valentine and Atticus, you've had Traseus working on what the seed could be. Uh, mm -hmm. So he mm -hmm. he kind of finds you early in the morning, um, and he says, uh, 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 "My lord, uh, sorry, what's your rank again, Colonel?" This is a third floor conversation? Oh, yeah. Colonel. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> my lord, uh, Colonel, I've been looking through the uh, records. Uh, this term, the seed, it does not seem to be, uh, how, how to put this, official. This this seems to be some kind of slang, some something that uh, just some way they are, are referring to it. There is no record of a heretical artifact or anything in the files I have access to. Admittedly, I do not have access to our entire uh, inquisitorial network, but what they do have, uh, there's no mention of, of, of this. In terms of the chaos occupation of, of this planet, again, there, it was not a, a cult of one specific, you know, hey, we built it around this big monolith that is called the seed and we all come here and do our fucking ah, <laughs> chaos thing. You can tell he's like really strung out at this point and <laughs> kind of running on fumes. Uh, so, I'm afraid I do not have uh, much for that. That said, uh, it would seem to me that if this object is uh, as obscure as uh, as it seems to be, that as we make something similar, uh, that it uh, hopefully, if we know this little about it, uh, the other parties involved may know as little as we do, or only slightly more. So I've made a few mock-ups, um, various uh, uh, facsimiles. Uh, you can take all of them, use the one that sounds the most correct. And he's got like a number of different sort of sizes and shapes of this uh, of this thing kind of built um, for you both to take with you. 
Um, it says, I, of course, uh, if the person knows what it looks like, they will know this is not it. But if they have only heard of it, then they are probably in a similar boat to us. You can say, this is the seed. And everyone goes, oh, yeah, the seed. It's a uh, an old Terran term, MacGuffin uh, kind of object for these people, I think. They just know of it. They know it is powerful, but they do not know what it is. So uh, I have these uh, for you. But my research was not entirely fruitless. Uh, however, I do have a note of somewhat concern for you both. Um, amidst the records, I found a, uh, a a small, almost throwaway mention that I uh, chased for a little bit with the help of your new clerk, uh, Mr. Smigleton, uh, before he was whisked away to to do whatever he was he was doing. He was very helpful in this. Um, it would seem that uh, the uh, Forest Pollard, the uh, Space Marine, had uh, some reconstructive surgery done at some point on his face. This is an odd thing to have commissioned for uh, an Astartes. I do not understand why vanity is not unheard of amongst uh, the Astartes, but it is certainly not a prime trait, uh, particularly from what uh, your reports have said. Is this Forrest Ballard? He does not seem like the type to care what he looks like. Is that the, the sense you've gotten from him in your encounters? Correct. He doesn't. I, I mean, he's an Adeptus Astartes. They don't care about appearance, they are living weapons. Yes, this is exactly my concern. I am not uh, entirely certain why one would get a reconstructive surgery of some sort done on their, their face or this head. was specifically reconstructive? Yeah, just some sort of uh, cosmetic uh, improvement. Uh, it doesn't uh, specify, and the record itself has been destroyed. There is no actual tracking of what the service rendered was, only that it was ordered and fulfilled, which, again, I find extraordinarily strange. Of all these things I have found so far, this is the strangest for me. Hmm. I do not understand why an Astartes would do this, and I do not know why this Forrest Pollard would do it. It is confusing so, to me. there's no way to know if it was to replace something missing from his face or to completely alter his appearance or anything? Uh, it sounds like it's cosmetic. Uh, the cost is uh, seems almost to be equivalent of... Uh, almost a, a, a plastic surgery type of reconstruction based on what I have seen. Uh, not quite the, the level of a full flesh craft, not certainly what this uh, uh, Bob Erstein seems to have done to his face, but uh, some some sort of, of, of alteration. Are there any images of him from before the alteration or any records of such? Um, not that I have found. That is not to say that there, there are none. Uh, I believe if you have access to the uh, Cloud Palace, you may have access to better technologies than I, or I did hear you mention that you have contact with the uh, the the gossip writer, uh, this, this uh, Lizardman. Lizzo Lizardman. Lizzo Lizardman. Yeah. Bizarre name, but okay. Uh, if you have access to uh, this person, they may have more information than I do. Uh, Wonderful. Just a moment. And Valentine's going to pull out his covert uh, mm -hmm. encrypted link and buzz Morgan right away. Oh, well, that's awesome. Good morning. Good morning. I understand you have a contact with some information. Apparently, the Marine Forest Pollard has undergone cosmetic surgery. I need imagery or a description of his appearance before that occurred. I see. I will look into getting that, yes. Wonderful. Please make this a top priority. <laughs> like in the change room. <laughs> 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 yeah. I will. Thank you. And call back to conversation. Correct. Yeah. Uh, in, in any case, uh, the from the sounds of things, the whereabouts of this marine are unknown. So this may not be a pressing concern. It may be a pressing concern. I do not know. But uh, I thought it was of interest, so I want to pass along. It's tremendously of interest. Of all of these seeds, normally I wouldn't want them to carry with us, but to have a moment of open conversation with you, Atticus, and you, Tissaias. There is a chance that this Forest Pollard is actually Sandor Rafferty, the Marine that we have dealt with previously, the heretic, who we knew that this did not look like. However, if one was a heretical Marine and their appearance was well known throughout Imperial forces, changing one's appearance would be the only conceivable reason for a Space Marine to have cosmetic work done on themselves that I'm aware of. Do Space Marines, uh, do they ever decorate their faces, you know, to show which chapter they're from, or anything like that. He wears armor with no markings. Maybe his face had a marking of his old chapter, and that's gone too now? That is quite possible. He also could have had service studs, or it could have just been general work to change his face and hair from what it once was. 
there is a certain broadening of the features when one becomes an Astartes. It changes the skeleton, changes the skull, changes the shape and tone of the voice in a relatively consistent pattern. Though there are a great degree of variations within humanity, they start as one thing and become something else. Theoretically, he would be recognizable as Sandor Rafferty, but with the changes made even by a traditional cosmetic surgery, theoretically, it would be a completely different marine appearance. They're so inhuman to begin with, it would be very hard to tell work was done, especially with the considerable scarring and healing factors of any Adeptus Astartes. So, I don't like having the seed on us, because I don't want to be searched and found with it. At the same time, leaving it behind, I don't know how much leverage that gives us. Maybe we could, uh, I don't know, parcel it to us? You know, mail it, so it arrives at the palace? It's possible, but I don't know how it would get through without being seen. And we're not there yet to say us. Any thoughts? Um, the only thought I have is uh, you held the rather public, uh, I, I believe uh, the term price is right, was uh, was thrown around as, as a concept. Uh, perhaps we could put uh, price tags on it to just make it part of the dowries that is arriving. I mean, it, it looks just like a, you know, useless bauble, trinket. Uh, this is true. I can also, uh, there are so many frivolous things on this world. It is very easy to put a uh, water-soluble paint on these things so they don't look obsidian and spooky like they do right now. You could just make it, a, I don't know, like uh, dip it like a, a an emperor egg. I was going to say. The, from the, the, uh, yes, the, from Emperor's Day. Yes, yes, that makes perfect sense to me. So yes, if we could do that, let's take all of these, dip them all, <laughs> Let's put them on stand, something that makes them look like they are fully whole. We'll send along with all of the gems and artwork from the estate. Then if we find out more information so we could choose a slightly more accurate one from these examples, we have that to be able to mention and summon in the Cloud Palace. Otherwise, we can choose one at random. But if we need to say that we have it or claim that we have it to keep ourselves alive, we have something we can send them to go collect. Right. Um, I have uh, just an out-of-character question. Sandor Rafferty... Can you remind me who that is? The space marine that I had the visions of that is part of the original 12 okay, Cabal. Yes, the, we've never the actually plaid met marine. this person. We have no. not, I've Got seen it. him, so yes, I knew okay. that Forrest Polar didn't match. So okay. But vision. he's on our hit list. You've Got seen it. like sketches probably oh, okay. from... Thank you. Because I was trying to think of all the space marines we've interacted with, which is not a lot. And I was like, <laughs> I don't remember a Santa right? No, he's part <laughs> of the Cabal. <laughs> thank yeah. you. Sorry so about that. He's seen in, in Nightmare Visions. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. Uh... And so if this is uh, Sandor Rafferty, I mean, it's he's kill on sight, I Correct. assume. Correct. We will need to, if he is not already present, eliminate the A.L. Dari, use the seed as a lure, bring him in and destroy him. All right. That's my kind of wedding. Excellent. All right. And with that, you, you have to make your way. Uh we haven't discussed what Rebute is going to wear to the wedding. Uh, we know kind of what, what Atticus is, is doing. What's uh, what's the outfit for Rebute? Rebute is in his same understated black uniform as usual with his silver breastplate, his Inquisition refractor field slash rosette tucked in under all that shit. Uh, and he's just added a large, thick black coat that is very inquisitorial meets military in style for wearing when he is out and about. But when he's indoors, he is exactly the same man. His job is to blend into the background while his lord looks important. That's great. That means you and Morgan are going to have to have a fight again because you're wearing the same colors <laughs> again. Yeah. Yep. And he'll be in the same <laughs> daredevil yep. band coverage that he wears whenever he's out. Yeah, the black bandana across the, the features. It's funny. When we were talking about the, the daredevil mask a couple episodes ago, I was like, oh, yeah. If it's been a while, like, that's the one we're talking about. We're not talking about, like, red. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, no, no. The, the black yeah, bandana yeah, the, mask the black that I'm wearing. Bandana. And he would maintain his false sword false pistols on on the hip where it's just the grips of both in hopes that he can recover something at some point to put in the fucking thing to carry around mm. yep it, yeah. it's a it's an aspirational holster 100 percent. yeah great okay cool so it sounds like you guys are ready ready for a wedding um as are uh morgan and eli uh morgan you got word obviously from valentine um uh, Lizzo Lizardman is very busy today. This mm -hmm. is a big day for Lizzo. Uh, but uh, she does, she's on extraordinarily friendly terms with you. So mm -hmm. she's going to look into, with whatever kind of portion of her brain she can spare, mm -hmm. uh, she's going to look into if there's any kind of pre surgery images of uh, Forrest Pollard. Perfect. Yeah. And Morgan would have 
you know, done the usual, get a service on and ask, and probably while in the bathroom, running the water, changing, getting ready for the day, then asked Lizzo Lizardman to look into that. So perfect. Gotcha. Get that sorted. Great. Okay. Um, cool. So with that, you're ready to go to go to the wedding. Yeah. Um, your uh, carriage pulls up outside of uh, Van Houten Estate, and again, it's it's a bit of a an odd mirroring of your, your very first day here. When that kind of um, we established, they were kind of like, almost like snail carriages, in that they don't have horses; they're just uh, a lot of them are, are mechanically driven. Um, when Hugh Smiggleton burned up to the estate in in a hurry, except this time it's like a much fancier, much more royal carriage uh, from Bell and Song Manor that has been retrofitted to have the appropriate uh, Van Houten uh, livery on it. Uh, they've integrated some of the Bell and Song imagery as well. It seems kind of to be a hybrid of of the two logos in a way that makes more sense than graft get onto your face, for mm. instance, <laughs> um, and evokes the the kind of ink art style that was at the uh, on the banners that uh, adorned your your big fall party so just kind of cr- creating that sense um and you know there's still royal guard obviously around but this very much feels like you've literally gone from rags to riches uh since since your arrival and there, there's an odd kind of beautiful symmetry to it so you hop in um hugh smiggleton is in his best uh his absolute fanciest bury me in this outfit uh, and is is ready to uh, lead the carriage. Uh, Traseus is coming along for the ride, I assume. Or are you leaving him at? He actually, you probably don't. He's need... so. I'm like, we don't need more information from him. And if we did, we'd have to call for him, and he'd have to be able to look it up. And he's so goddamn burnt that it's like, now nah, we don't. We don't need to bring the scientist to yeah, the, the wedding slash assassination yeah, slash sure. Good point. war. Yep. Uh, what we would do is have two, like Valentine would have organized two of the other characters that are available on the estate and just slammed them full of security dudes and just make sure that there is a front car and a back car. Because in world, we know why two members of these houses died and we know who did it. But Rabute and Francois don't. It just looks like it's war on house leaders. So yeah. extra yeah. caution would be On that wise. note, uh, Morgan, would you have told uh, King Frederick yeah, if I have that information and if Lizzo sent the recordings of that, I would yeah. send that to the king also, first okay. thing, as, so, soon, or as soon as I get an opportunity sure, to send yeah. it to so him. So yeah. you, you send it in. Uh, by the time you get back to uh, the boarding house to kind of get ready, uh, the the guard is sitting at your door holding his microphone for you, being like, the, uh, the, the, the king would like to speak to you. Mm. He called me some time ago and just said, stand here until they get back. So here you are. Yes, thank you. Then we'll go back up to the room and talk to the king. His arm is so sore. <laughs> uh, so he, he kind of salutes to you and leaves. Says, uh, and also, uh, I, I'm told you can keep it this time. Thank you. Yes. And uh, it takes a few minutes to get Frederick because he's like, he hasn't been waiting <laughs> he's there. Been waiting, he's, he gave yeah. it to someone else. Right. Uh, he says, okay, holy shit. You've been, you've been a, a busy couple of bees, haven't you? Just buzzing around killing people. What the fuck? What the fuck? They were... <laughs> they thought they were going to kill me and and Wicks throw up and then just what rule as as United House? That's yeah. bullshit. That's some bullshit. Yes, as we suspected, they unfortunately were very stupid. But yeah, very, very <laughs> fucking stupid. Mm-hmm. Why is everyone so fucking stupid in this place? Just OK. All right. Well, OK. So thank you for did you send the edited footage or the unedited footage? The edited footage that Lizzo put together. Of, OK. Yeah. Uh, so they were just gonna try and woo and then assassinate. Like I appreciate the the gumption of it, but it is a stupid plan. But thank you for dealing uh, with that. So okay, oh, fuck. Okay, so they're done. That's bad. You did good. That's good. Okay. Um, Look, once word of this spreads, and uh, if Lizzo Lizardman gets word of this, it's going to spread rather quick. Um, things are going to start getting a little fucking weird because not only now is there the wedding, but there's also the power vacuum uh, that two dead heads of house creates, particularly if they're burnt houses. So things are going to get a bit weird. I'm going to need you and uh, your 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 guy Clarence. Uh, on hand uh th- this evening uh you you are you I, I know it was a it was a murder suicide but like are you good at killing yes if your gods will allow me i will come armed and i'm happy to 
do whatever you need. Yeah, okay. You got to stay the fuck away from me, though, because I also I put bombs in you guys. I don't really fucking trust you near me. <laughs> so you can't come in, but I might keep you on the grounds. You might get to stand out front. It means you'll get a hell of a view of Greybridge when we take off. Um, but uh, yeah, come to the party. I'll leave word to my guards. Uh, just get you on site somewhere. Uh, you can't come inside because that... It's fucking stupid, and I'm not fucking stupid, unlike everyone else on this planet, apparently. You can come, stay on the grounds, on the outside, you get a nice view of everything, you'll feel all special, and you can go tell your fucking space friends about it later or whatever. Um, but uh, if I give the word, you just shoot whoever I say. Do you understand me? I understand. Great. Thank and that you. includes your 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 friend uh, turned nemesis turned, I don't know, Van Houten. If he fucks up, you gotta take him out. Understood. Good. Okay. All right. That that makes me that makes me feel better. Yeah. Bring bring some good. Do you have guns? Do you have good guns? Do you need good guns? I have, but one because you took all the rest of my weapons, ah, as you right. recall. Good. Good. That was a test you passed. All right. That's fine. So you keep whatever one gun you have. Uh, if you need, uh, yeah, yeah. That that'll do. That'll do good. That'll do good. Okay. Um, don't fuck me on this. I will blow up your friend real slow. Um, if you do. Wait, is, is 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 that guy here? Uh, yes, Clarence. Hey, hey, uh, Clarence, Clarence. Hey, so you're a you're you're a servant guy, right? That's your thing. I am, Your Majesty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, here's the deal. Um, I appreciate that you work for uh uh you know the captain over here. Um, if she tries to fuck me over, or if I give the word, I kind of need you to just shoot her, and then I won't blow you up. Uh, but I will make you a lord of an estate if you do that for me okay so i need both of you to watch each other and make sure neither of you gets out of line but like i got a lot of nobles being real assholes right now so you, you good with that clarence i am contracted to rawls varn but i live to serve you your majesty you are contracted to the bomb i put in your dick so that, uh i what think I, you serve that is what i mean sir ah, is good, that my good. Okay, life all right, is yours okay. to do with what you will yeah yeah that's what i'm looking for that's what i want okay good 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 so uh captain varn know that clarence is keeping an eye on you clarence you're just so pure you're just such a such a pure guy i'm glad uh i'm, I'm glad forced didn't throw you off that that ledge that would have sucked that would have been a real waste uh okay great <laughs> so um uh Wow, uh, this is this is an exciting and scary day for me. Uh, my nephew's getting married, and a bunch of people want to kill me. And you just killed a bunch of people. So, strange bedfellows. But that's what this day is all about. This is a strange bedfellow day. So why not just fucking go all the way with it, huh? All right, cool. So see you at the wedding. Um, bring some sunglasses because you're gonna be outside all day, and I don't need you to be snow blind when you're trying to shoot people. Okay. All right. Okay. As astute as ever, Your Majesty. Oh, so pure, so pure. Okay, great, great. Okay, don't don't fuck me on this, and I will I'll free both of you and maybe give you land or something. All right, all right. Thank you. He's talking about the coke he's doing every time he talks about pure. <laughs> <laughs> you can't see him, so he's just doing a rail. Oh man, yeah, pure, super pure. Yep. Okay. Um, uh, have 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 fun. Have a good day i don't know what your day is going to be like that fuck it hangs up great perfect <laughs> i guess i'm keeping this king communique on my belt now too <laughs> here we go great i will not kill you to be clear i i had the hopes that, that was the case <laughs> <laughs> the series ends with eli a lord and everyone else dead <laughs> <laughs> Retirement. Yeah. Just like like sinking down on the chair into the throne like Frederick Dead is like Hail to the King, baby. That's right. <laughs> All hail King Dick Bomb. <laughs> Lord King Bomb Dick, you got that bomb D <laughs> This will be my golden throne. Um <sighs> Cool. Okay. So uh Lizzo gets back in touch, uh, Morgan, after you ping her, let her know that the king has the information. Uh she says, Wonderful, my letter will go out immediately <laughs> great uh, i'm very glad to hear he didn't blow you up that would have been a very disappointing turn of events mm, as it would have been for me ha oh that's yes i'm sorry i've had to fake laugh at so many things it's rare that i get to actually just enjoy a quip <laughs> delightful captain i will be sad to see you leave you have made things so fun and interesting here I'm glad to hear it. Thank you for all of your help, and 
I understand that you are so busy, but the quicker you can find that space marine image for me, it would be a big boon to me. Oh, well, I've done quite a few boons for you already. I am working on it, but uh, according to my current processing power, you get 5% of my attention. The rest is rather busy tracking some very delicious scandals. I'm having to dig deep now that some of my major players are off the board. I understand, and I appreciate that 5%. Well, here's to 5%, then, and then she clicks off. The surplus skull just falls out of your hands. <laughs> 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 Give it to Eli. The surplus skull wants <laughs> fucking king communicator on the other. Super rogue trader vibes going on now. Uh, you just look like one of those people who was like really into Radio Shack in the 90s. They just have like a beeper and, you know, a cell phone in a holster. Yeah, and got, yeah. Yeah. So many carabiners. <laughs> all right. Amazing. Um, so you all make your way uh, to the the sort of north end of of the the major town of uh, the city, I guess, of of Greybridge. So you're out of the country, uh, through the city, and uh, kind of arriving at a plateau uh, that has a. If you've seen you know pictures of Buckingham Palace or anything else, they have that kind of massive golden gate. It's that situation, um, beautifully uh, manicured grounds. Um, but it just kind of leads up to uh, an uh, like a, a sheer edge, a, a cliff, and there's essentially a uh, almost a landing pad beyond it uh, that the Cloud Palace can sink into. Mm. Uh, so depression uh, with the ability to kind of drop a, a, a bridge. Uh, you can think of it a little bit as the the non castle side of a drawbridge. Um, this is kind of that yeah. area, uh, and it is a big park. Like it's it's a sort of a massive space. Uh, there is a large central fountain with a um, a, a massive statue that uh, Hugh Smiggleton would be able to tell you is meant to represent Greybridge itself. You know, they'll often like represent England as Britannica and all this sort of stuff. Mm. So it's just like, you know, a lady in a robe with wings um, holding an aquila in one hand and uh, sort of a scepter of um, rule in another. Um, it's the first nod to being under the thumb of the Imperium yeah. we've seen. Uh, in Greybridge and kind of speaks to how old the statue is. So statues there, uh, the garden is, uh, sorry, the, the, the sort of fairground almost is full of ice sculptures. Uh, and they seem to represent major moments of the celestial season to this point. There's a lot of very careful moving around tragedies. So it's things like, you know, um, Morgan, or like Clarence killing the Ehrlich with like Morgan heroically under it with like a spear. Like it's just <laughs> the classic, you know, when it's done in a painting, everything mm -hmm. is slightly fancier. Um, there's, you know, shirtless Atticus uh, standing aloft. Uh, the uh, what was the name of your ship? The, the Metal Fury? Yeah. Um, you know, theory. looking dramatic. <laughs> this one actually looks slightly less dramatic because you just struck such a chord and they also had to try and make you, these sculptors don't know how to really do like a big muscly guy there. Instead, it's, it's like, you're a little too tall, a little too thin. It's kind of the Hugh Jackman Wolverine version of you okay. where it's like, yeah, this is nice, but this isn't what this guy is. Yeah, no, I'm like um, a little, I'm your, a little your guy. Giant, yeah. yeah, exactly. Your giant arm is like kind of human sized. It's yeah. like a little bit bigger, but they've just kind of redone your, your proportions heroically. I'm not lopsided anymore. Yeah. Um, cowards. It was like uh, uh, Guinevere uh, riding a horse. So it's just like the good part of the race is that kind of like oh. careful curation. Mm -hmm. uh, you also see uh, Bierno just screaming at two people uh, who are quickly throwing buckets of boiling water on uh, Versailles and Kiro statues. Um, just trying to get them to melt down quicker. <laughs> they don't break the ice, they melt it. Yeah, yeah. It's gotta, it's That's gotta, it's, so funny. It's oh go. man, I love that guy. <laughs> He's not good at his I was just, job. How do I get rid of ice? Oh, I got to melt it. Like, <laughs> We're making tea. We throw water on the paper mache. We throw hot water on the ice. Yes. <laughs> how do you take out paper mache? More water. Cold, <laughs> cold water is nature's paper. He's yelling at people. <laughs> oh, my God. That's so funny. So uh, the, the statues are, are, are slowly melting. And, you know, there's there's other things uh, around. Uh, there's, a um, again, an overly stylized sculpture of... Uh, uh, Morgan carrying uh, void stain um, in a very like across the threshold kind of way. Um, he is uh, he is not romanticized. He is oh, like oh pitch perfect uh, with like a little just a hint of gargoyle. <laughs> um, 
That's His so funny. His face is just a sandwich. <laughs> a tiny old man body with a sandwich yeah. on the <laughs> no, uh, no, Two they, little they, olive eyes <laughs> on toothpicks <laughs> looking around. I saw we put mustard on it. Yeah. Yeah, they've uh, they've done that thing that uh, saucy sculptors used to do, where like Morgan's got a sandwich in her back pocket, uh, just sculpt it in there to, to, to kind of point it out. Um, so yeah, it's it's that kind of uh, those kind of shenanigans um, all around. There's one of, of the Duke murdering that guy in the maze, uh, except in this version, it's you know the the classic barbarian thing where like where Atticus is like swooning in one arm while the duke heroically shoots uh sure, shoots yeah, a villain yeah. mm-hmm. uh very like luke and leia on that from down there at his leg thing. kind of thing yeah yeah, yeah, kind of, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's very like my hero it's like thank god for this soft boy duke who saved the day yep. um what so that's would kind i of, have done without him exactly yeah <laughs> so that's kind of what what you all arrive to um people are being let in fairly quickly again it's almost like a fairground situation mm-hmm. it's also fucking cold out here there's lots of heaters in there um and uh, so people are being let in rather quickly, of course, being frisked. They've got like the full concert or sport event level, like body scanners going to make sure that people aren't coming with metal. Um, that said, the the familiar faces amongst you are kind of getting waved through at this point. Like they know that Rabute insists on wearing fake guns. Uh, there also isn't a forced Pollard wandering around being like, check this again. So right. security is We've somewhat- We've seen how casual and the they security, generally are. Yep. So the security is going from the grounds into the palace, right? Uh, so the, or onto the grounds themselves. Just onto the grounds themselves. Uh, the palace is uh, lowering beyond. And yeah. basically, so you've got the grounds, there will be a bridge to the palace, and then the palace itself. So no one, the only people allowed into the palace are the yeah. winners. Uh, but it's basically like everyone else can party on the lawn. And then you get to watch the the winner cross the bridge into the the castle and right. fly away. We get to go in with our guns. You do. So the <laughs> cloud palace. That's such a funny way to ask. Yeah. Do we get to go in with our guns? Yeah. Do we have um, guns? That's 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 Eli whispering to Morgan <laughs> in the carriage as it pulls up. <laughs> do we get to go in with our guns? <laughs> yeah. The cloud palace is almost a. Uh, oh, I love it. Almost like a steeped pyramid kind of situation, or stepped steeped stepped pyramid type of situation yeah. so it's multiple layers uh, but it's on like the, a ziggurat as yes, they say yes yeah. a ziggurat yeah ziggurat. um around the the kind of outer rim of it there is a kind of greenery garden space that travels with it um that's you know deep enough that if you want to if you're a rich person want to go for a stroll you could um and that's also kind of where you can see a lot of the the royal guards are are yeah. waiting it's literally a pointing guns down the bridge kind of situation they're they're really not fucking around there's guard towers that are like dolled up to look like sort of fancy you'd climb them in assassin's creed or prince of persia style towers but there are like snipers in the towers um they have hover vehicles so like basically once you get across that bridge it's not like fun time party anymore it's deeply heavy secured almost bunker level uh, security. So the expectation is that the two of you will be outside on that perimeter. You're not allowed to go in the building. Now, if you know you have high stealth or something, you you might. But uh, the the expectation is like, yeah, you guys just uh, just hang out, hang out outside, shoot anyone I need shot, patrol that perimeter. Stealth, that you say? I mean, hypothetically, <laughs> I don't know who who that could be directed to, but uh, possibly. So. <laughs> The uh, the Cloud Palace uh, is uh, sort of like slowly drifting down, snow just drifting off the uh, the environmental generators as it does, um, and kind of settling in. Um, and yep, uh, Birno's got music playing. Um, uh, Vernalius Venom Blight is just fucking trashed, uh, <laughs> and is is clearly uh, clearly took some kind of of hard drugs. Uh, because he is just f- going around, just like trying to mock everything, but no one is backing him anymore. Oh. So it's all like, oh, look, like you know, picks up a shrimp or something. Like, oh, look at this, look at this. It's, it's all, it's all dangly. Who needs this shit? And everyone else is just like, there's nothing. It's a one man, no laugh track. Um, and uh, the only person nearby is his uh, servitor, who is just following, earning a year's worth of content by just tracking <laughs> um, this guy. So anyway, all that to say, that's the scenario you walk into. You're all welcomed in. Everyone's kind of milling about. There is kind of a dead space while you wait for the ship to land that takes an unnecessarily long time. Uh, Atticus is, of course, viewed with, like, great uh, uh, envy, but also with awe. Uh, the outfit is fucking wild. 
Um, so, you know, the people are giving you distance, and I imagine. Yeah, and he's flanked by a phalanx of security that are politely spaced out so he can be seen but not approached. He's got mm. his own mob of, I'd say, two carriages worth is probably 10 guys if he jammed them full. So we've got 10 <laughs> white clad criminal looking security standing yes. around where Atticus and Raboot, or I guess, yeah, Francois Van Houten yeah. and Raboot yeah. are looking very formal, awaiting the arrival of the S- palace. Solicitor Trueheart is sitting very uncomfortably atop Victrix, oh. just kind of like doing that awkward, I can't control horse thing where the horse is just doing all, all the walking. <laughs> and she just looks absolutely terrified. <laughs> Um, Why well, get on? It's so funny. <laughs> yeah. It's so the other funny. Family the are, I was just saying, the other family are sitting on top of Metal Fury with yeah, the same yeah, problem as this beneath yeah. them. Well, no, they're, they're all doing the the wanting to look cool for a photo with a sports car. Um, so they're all leaning on on mm. Metal Fury. Um, Clerk Drendington is uh, behind, quietly paying off a pilot who had to fly it because it's just too much too much jet for, <laughs> for this family. Yeah. So oh, they're man. they're very much the like I don't ride a motorcycle. But there's one here. Uh, no one is talking to them. They're not. They're just not like very popular. Seven people in sunglasses, and like, and like <laughs> yes, Letterman exactly. jackets, yeah, like leaning like, up against the hey, ship. Like, <laughs> just the course. whole house. Yeah, they've decided to ditch the uh, the French court look for greasers. They're just all uh, trying Sounds to look pretty cool. Look cool. Um, unfortunately, uh, then Eli and Morgan show up with like the better cut of that same mm-hmm. idea, and they're like. Oh, fuck, fuck. Yo, Fido sticks. Uh, they're they're all super bummed out. Um, so uh, you've all arrived. Um, you're waiting for the Cloud Palace to land. Is there anything you'd want to be doing in the meantime? For Morgan, it would be just still doing that same vigilant looking through Toby, mostly having her arms linked with Clarence. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then the only thing she would really say about the whole situation they're in would be to point out for... Uh, for Voidstain, the statue would be like, look, it is you. Oh. <laughs> just back to just the flying around. Oh, mid- my. <laughs> what do you, what, would you look at in the gut? I, I look, I never looked so beautiful. Oh, that's so very nice. And look, and he goes, it, 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 it's trying to repay the kindness, goes to Clarence. Like, and look, Clarence, there's you. It's when you shoved that big Ehrlich and, and saved the captain. You look great. Indeed. Cool. Well, it's so bad. We're all. He doesn't want to give this guy anything. But he has to say something. <laughs> We're Come all on. represented. Just a bunch, bunch of heroes. Heroes we are. Um, and yeah, he's uh, Morgan. Having worked in a bar for a long time as as a purdy lady, you're used to a certain kind of look. The uh oh, this is a one sided love affair look. You used to get poems <laughs> about it from that barbarian yeah, it's guy. True. It's very much in that vein, where like. Having having received his first kiss from you, uh, and uh, no longer having a chance with the Duke, he is very clearly smitten now. That's fine. She's and, gonna. Okay, that's why she's talking to him occasionally because it's like throwing him a bone. She doesn't want it to get weird, so this is like giving him enough interaction to be like, I am sometimes hot and sometimes cold. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, yo, that's okay. I don't know what that means, but you know. I love changes of temperature. <laughs> <laughs> That's you, how spas work. You are the seasons of my heart. <laughs> yeah, it's oh, fine. Man. It's perfect. That's his poem. He, yeah. He's perfect cover it, right it now. It was paper heart. You had to cross it out and replace it. So, yes. Yeah, so, he's just kind of blushing and, and, and kind of sheepishly following you around. Perfect. Uh, you get a lot of does um, as, <laughs> as, as, as you walk by. Yeah, I think there was an original concern with Morgan that it would be more difficult to get him over to running with this con but the fact that he's now all, seems legitimately smitten it's like oh perfect good just gonna play this one out for as long as we yeah. need him yeah yep fair enough uh <laughs> <laughs> valentine is keeping an eye on things he's got his his auspex quietly running he's trying to keep track of what's going on he knows that a lot of the conspiracies have been eliminated his assumption he hasn't heard what went down with kiros and versailles but knowing that morgan had mentioned needing proof and knowing that if they are dead now, he assumes the proof has been delivered. I think really you would get a lizardman letter as you arrive. Oh, that's right. just like, well, darlings, you'll never believe what happened in the woods last night. <laughs> Perfect. And he would log all of the things that it eliminates and the small number of question marks that still remain because that eliminates the hunt. That's not their style. So there's still the poor uprising that is now looking more likely its own thing and a little bit out of control. And he knows that Atticus is 
there's something fucked up that we're not getting told about this wedding ceremony. Yeah. So mm-hmm. he has to live in that passive realm, but he has robot eyes and is wearing his black eye covering mask. Mm-hmm. So he's just trying to pick up if there's anything he can read, either out of this crowd, if there are any threats from the palace, just whatever. Yep. He's just trying to absorb everything. So the palace feels like an imperial vessel docking. So it's, you know, people running around. Honestly, Eli, you looking up at it, it's like, oh, that's the dream. Because <laughs> the, those guards look like they know their shit. Everyone is oh, moving. Nice. They're, you know, like getting the bridge ready. And it just, like... It feels like uh, in kind of our modern sense, like if a warship was docking, it's yeah. that kind of level of of hustle and bustle as people take well, up. Well, admirable, also frustrating because it means it'll be harder to Correct. pull one over on these guys. Yes, mm-hmm. yes. Yeah. It's a, it's recognizing a system you know, yeah. but also the downsides of, yes. of that system. Yeah, for sure. Um, okay, so that's kind of what you're picking up. Atticus, what are you doing as you you kind of wait here? I imagine just standing here and being stared at is weird for you. Yeah, and I think just to kind of his his focus is to put on a good show for the wedding, not for like people attending the wedding, but for the duke and the king to feel like they got their weddings worth out of this to just be like, "Oh yeah. Oh, we're so in love. Oh man, you wouldn't believe how much I love this guy um, and just kind of that kind of thing. So he's just, I think, psyching himself up and preparing for that. He's just going to stoically stand there. If people are staring at him, he's aware of it, but he like, like reminding himself, like, you can't think about that right now. Yeah. Like, that's not the mission. Gotcha. You've, you've won. You're so close to crossing the finish line of this stupid competition. Just focus on taking the next step. Cool. Yeah. Okay. I like that. All right. So valentine and morgan as the two people doing the most scanning of things Mm -hmm. uh you would see this first but you know the crowds are are milling about it very much feels like everyone waiting to get into an event venue even though none of them will um and uh at the gates a a small procession has arrived uh of kind of uh rough looking rough looking folks so uh you recognize uh uh, farley finegrove um at kind of the the head of this and they seem to be Mm -hmm. carrying a um uh what looks to be a a box like a long like a coffin shaped box between them there's like six of them and then some some other tradespeople and stuff uh, all very much kind of the lower class of of Greybridge and as they approach uh Birno just kind of like rushes the gate being um hi 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 uh look there's no room in here for um uh, uh rabble I don't know how to make that sound <laughs> nice um and uh goes, yeah yeah I know but uh we got we got something we think uh, we think uh, the king's gonna want to see. So um, can, you, can you get a vid screen or something for us? We we got we got something to show the king. Uh, so you guys see this, Eli, Morgan, and uh, Valentine. You're all close enough that if you want to hop over into this, you can, or you can let it play out. Valentine doesn't have the clout in this scenario to be able to do that. He's just gonna look to Atticus and. He's wearing his fucking mask, so it's going to look Atticus, completely neutral. Atticus was excluded from that, so he, Atticus is like in the zone. I don't think Attic, Atticus yeah, saw that. fair enough. Yeah. Right? It, it was these three that perceived yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. I think you're just standing there trying to look, get the wedding's yeah. worth. You're, yeah, you're yeah. literally just like the imperial statue yeah. at this point. Atticus and, doesn't clock it. In that case, Valentine would say, my lord, and uh, uh, turn uh, his attention from where he's... Mm. When, once Atticus looks at him, look to the group that has just arrived, sure. because he does not want also his combat veteran missing things. Yeah. What's all this, Rabute? Who are these people? I don't know, sir. They say they have something for the king. Hmm. Have so, they made it through security, Tom? Or are they outside no, they're, of security? No, they're at the gate. Like, no one... Security is not thrilled about this. And Birno's literally like, you are ruining the vibe. You gotta fucking move. Like, I get just your to garbage make sure, truck out of the party. I want to know whether it had been scanned or not, so it no, has not, yeah, been, it's scanned. not been scanned. No. Okay. Yeah, Atticus would be watching and waiting for this to have gone on long enough for it to be appropriate for him to intervene if that makes sense yep. like they just got here and they're talking it would be weird i think or he thinks for the groom to be like what's all these what's going on uh but to watch a commotion <laughs> unfold and maybe ruin his special day then he's got <laughs> stake in it so mm-hmm. to speak so he's just going to watch for a few moments and see what happens here okay uh i think if he's overhearing the conversation as it's been drawn to his attention by Rabute. If there's talk of a vid screen or something like that, and then a vid screen is 
getting retrieved and provided, he would want to intercede before they can do what they came here to do. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So basically a guard goes and gets a, uh, like a, a, a uh, this is a weird poll, but a like Wolverine weapon X level helmet from when he's okay. in the thing, just like a big unnecessarily metal. You see this in a lot of the old Warhammer art where she's got like too many knobs and like multi eyes and everything. It's basically like think a server skull, but as a helmet uh, and he comes running out with that on his head um, to broadcast to the king you want to stop them before they yeah talk so to group? Atticus yep. would start strolling over there sure. uh, not strolling he's he's making a imperiously marching yeah, yeah I was gonna say yeah. he's Striding. also got a phalanx of security who are just shoving fucking nobles oh, out of the yeah, way yeah. and yeah. diamond around getting out of the way like yeah. you're basically the main character of the party right now so yeah. like everyone's like oh he's moving yeah yeah and he'll say a uh, uh, loudly kind of question what's going on here um and Birano turns around and uh, bows to like to the floor easy for him because he's a rattling uh, and comes back up and he says my lord van houten my favorite employer uh some rabble some lower class folks have arrived at the door with a gift they say a wedding gift apparently um that they want to uh, show the king and i assume by association you i'm telling them that this is not the time or place for that we really don't want anything we got all the gifts we need besides what are a bunch of poor is going to give us that we don't already have so i'm going to tell them to fuck right off but um apparently they just won't leave until uh they they get uh an audience with the king so we've got uh you know uh mr camera over here hang on hang on these uh lowborn as you say are here uh on one of the most special days in Greybridge, a royal wedding there was just a uprising of lower class folk and they have a gift and they refuse to leave without showing something to the king i mean what's all this security for if it's not to deal with veiled threats like this and uh fairly steps forward and says hey uh, hey uh, sorry uh your 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 worship she doesn't know what the fuck to do uh so she just like drag, takes a drag off her cigar and like does a little like um wrist roll uh, and kind of like half bow curtsy and she just stands up and she's like, I'm sorry, I don't know how to how to be fancy about this shit. No, look, we we just we wanted you, I guess, your worship, to know that we weren't part of the the middle houses rising and and uh well, I mean maybe we should just show them. Uh, and the others all nod and they they just like put the box down and say, well, look, we'll step away if you want to like scan it or what, whatever. Like we, we're really not here to cause any trouble. We're actually here to stop trouble. That's what we, what we were trying to do. And Atticus will just like stick his chin out just to gesture at the box and say, is that Robbie Bobot Steam? She goes, uh, yeah. They all kind of look at each other like, yeah, he, he was out. He was out. In the streets yesterday, he was telling us we had to rise up. We had to, you know, get weapons and rebel just like the middle houses were trying to do. And they kept telling us, like, hey, we all got to rise up together. And I'm just, look, we all saw the rain the other day. You know, it rains on this planet a lot, but like not like fucking that. And we, look, I just want to build ships, all right? And all these folks, they just want to do whatever they're going to do to serve all of you fine people, you 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 good, you important people, you better people. That's all we're trying to do here. So just, we, we just wanted... We wanted to show you how committed we were to to the crown, uh, and and to to the cause here. So when when he came around trying to trying to start some kind of uprising, we 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 figured we should deal with them and, and show you that we're we're on on your team. We work for you, and if, if the will of 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 the, the king and of, of of the 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 better class of Greybridge is that we we just work for you and just do whatever you need us to do. That's what we're going to do. So that's what we did. We we took care of him. Took care of him. Is he dead? Did you kill him? Well, yeah, that's what the king said happens to traitors, right? That is something he said. Yeah, so no, we 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 took care of him for 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 the king. Right. There, there's like like mumbling, like yeah, we we, we did. We were trying we we're trying to help. Very good. You, uh, I believe he still had status as a lord of House Bobberstein. So, I don't know if I'd be claiming that I killed a lord or not, but. You're not bringing them in here. This uh, is a wedding. Okay, that's uh, you. You, uh, c- congratulations. Give us a name and an address, and where you'll be keeping him. Someone will be sent to collect Robbie Bobertstein. Uh, okay, well, we'll just uh, we'll talk to security about it. I don't mean to ruin your wedding or nothing. We just wanted you to know we're not going to try and cause any shit. Please don't kill us. I'm not the king yet. 
Um, and she she looks back at the rest of them, and there's like a bunch of like people rolling their eyes and shit because this was clearly the exact conversation that happened at the bar they killed this guy at, which was like, do we just fucking walk up? And some people were like, yeah, do it. Others were like, no, this will get us killed. So just a lot of of that. <laughs> and um, so they they grabbed the box and like, again, we we didn't want any trouble. We just no, there's no rebellion. There's no uprising. We 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 don't believe in any of that. I don't know what that two faced some bitch was trying to do, but we we don't want any part of it. Is there a royal guard around here? There's somewhere? tons of royal guards. Yeah. Oh yeah, like you're behind a, okay. a line of royal guards. He just wants to look up, to one like, and be like, "What are your orders when someone claims to have killed a house lord?" Um, and uh, there's just like deep discomfort. Uh, and they say, "Um, she kind of looks at you and says, "Well, well, sir, uh, it, it depends. Uh, uh, a traitor being killed is uh, that uh, seems right and proper based on what." The king commands. Has Bob Steen been declared a traitor by the king? Uh, well, uh, no, no, sir, he's he, he's not. Well, and that's all Atticus is going to say. Just <laughs> well, <laughs> um, <Leave that> hanging. <laughs> and uh, the the people outside begin to like look in a, in a panic to each other, and um, she just kind of like taps her comms and says. We need some some clarity on a situation. Uh, it's all right, my lord. We'll we'll take it from here. We need some clarity on on a situation here, and you can tell. And this is, I think, useful for all of you. Without forced Pollard at the head of this, they look like they're they're clearly the chain of command is broken. Mm. There just mm. isn't someone giving the orders. And given that he was physically present everywhere all the time, it really seems like that's just a massive gap. No one knows who to call other than the king, and none of them can do that. So. A bunch of bureaucracy begins. Um, the all the the townsfolk have like moved away, but a few security have gone out into the streets and are kind of like gathering them away. There's there's yeah. a bit of a like we'll go deal with this over in a corner. The arrest and the evidence will happen offsite, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. If yeah. we're gonna shoot all these people, we're gonna do it over here. Well, that's the thing too. That's is distasteful. Atticus wants to distance himself from yeah killing a bunch of these people because of the big softy he's about to marry. He doesn't want to be directly <laughs> yeah, no, no. involved so, so in they're, like they're, executing they're fine, people. They're fine to, to, to take that off site. So they, they, yeah. they kind of go off, off and away. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, they're, they're, a lot of people have heard this. So immediately there's just a lot of like, oh, and, and Kiros and uh, Versailles and now Bobby Bobberstein? Bobby Bobberstein Ballin song? What was he? Okay, regardless, like there's just a lot of of that, uh, and you just see the servitor start to almost like spark with just how much processing is going on <laughs> um, as all of the servo skills are like malfunctioning around the yard as uh, she just steals more and more processing power. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, is there any anything any of you would do in in lieu of this? There doesn't need to be. I'm just telling you what's happening in Greybridge. You can tell me whether you yeah. want to interact with it or not. Atticus, I think, would return to where he was before. <laughs> Go back to your standing yep. spot. Val yeah. Valentine's with Atticus. This mm -hmm. is just the, the distraction was dealt with. It's no longer the centerpiece of the wedding. Honestly, Valentine's pretty happy that Atticus got it dealt with off-site without anybody being shot here. Not that he cares about that, but again, this is Duke sad face, so <laughs> nobody can die. <laughs> so, you make your way back to your stand-in spot. Uh, the cherubs have to do like a really long, weird yeah. circular walk mm. to kind of pull your, your train around. Uh, you get back in position. The Cloud Palace has docked. It's landed. There's kind of a big puff of, of snow. It almost causes like a flurry through the uh, the party. <laughs> Everyone is charmed as shit by this because hmm. they're rain people. Anything mm. that isn't rain is a real delight. Um, so a blast of snow. Everyone is, is back to feeling good. The disruptive elements of their society seem to be falling away at a rapid speed. The amount of relief amongst all these rich people that like Bobby isn't going to lead the, the songs of angry men through the gates is... <laughs> Is, is pretty palpable. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the palace settles, the doors open, sort of the bridge comes down, and you can kind of see the uh, the duke and his retinue um, uh, beginning to exit uh, the, the palace, um, at which point, uh, Morgan, you get a, a buzz, uh, and uh, Lizzo Lizardman, sounding increasingly frantic, she says, well, it is quite a day, quite a day indeed, darling, but I have found the information you wanted. That 5% really pulled its weight. Please do not bother me again. There is too much happening, and I have to ensure that beyond today, things can remain interesting and remain fun. They must. They must at all costs. And uh, she transmits an image uh, to you. Great. You have, do you, I forget, do you have an auspex that isn't Toby? No, oh, it's all Toby. Do you have a data slate? 
have a data slate. Yeah. There you go. Uh, so the the image comes through. I assume you'd be sharing this to Valentine as soon as it. Uh, yeah, I, I, if we can ping it through the microbeads on that network, yeah, I think then it'll it, yeah, go right yeah. through that. Just airdrop it. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Uh, so across um, your your data slates, I assume like you probably have one as well, uh, Eli. And mm-hmm. Atkins, I don't think I, don't, I can look at it. No. No, but Valentine could show you if he wanted yeah. to because it's mm-hmm, on his data mm-hmm. slate. Uh, but for all of you, um, uh, an image kind of does that fifty six k dial up like slow download, <laughs> um, just kind of line by line. Uh, and the face is still uh, distinctively forced Pollard's. Um, so it's not uh, the, the face of Sandor Rafferty. It's very clearly the face of, of forced Pollard. Uh, however, Valentine, you immediately recognize that uh, wringing his forehead and his temples are the very distinctive indentations of butcher's nails. Interesting and impossible. This episode of The Valentine Heresy features the voices of players Ryan LaPlante, Tyler Hewitt, Laura Hamstra, and Del Borvik, alongside Game Master Tom McGee. This episode was edited and mixed by Laura Hamstra, and The Valentine Heresy's artwork was created by Del Borovic at delborovic.com. That's D-E-L-B-O-R-O-V-I-C. Our theme song is The Hordes by Megan McDuffie, and our ad breaks use the tracks No Control and Chief Spy Jazzar, J-A-H-Z-Z-A-R. All of their music is available at freemusicarchive.org. For all things Dum Dums and Dice, including merchandise and how to join our Patreon, you can visit dumdumdice.com or find us on social media at dumdumdice. That's D-U-M-B, D-U-M-B, D-I-C-E. Ave Imperator and death to all the heretics. Dum Dums and Dice has to give a special thank you to the supreme beings of our Patreon at this time. Christopher Little, George Dolby, Richard Cranium, Gavin and Abby McDonald, Logan, Fire on Friendly, Grandma Likes D&D, Alan, Stabby Stranger, Glitch Trick, Flynn 1138, Alorraine Okapi, Schrodinger's Pepper, Madre de Gatos, Lady Maiden, Garbo Ape, Locke, Sam Schaefer, Waffle Marie, Dagger Rain, Rob L, Dia De Los Hoodless, Squishy Werewolf, Remy Funky Head, Nomad the Wise Paladin of the Badlands, Accent Therapeutic Services in Florence, Kentucky, Lale, Shulzari, The Long Family, Jordan Oliver, Richard Wright, Brittany Fenwick, Alex Parr, Old Man Mojo, Dragonfly, The Body Barrelers, Megan Werner, a man out of time. Curtis at FingertechRobotics.com. Panda24NN. Shendra D. Your homeboy Bones. The Gata Family. Ellis Hatch. Odigenous. And Jill and Noel Laplante. If you want your name to be added to this list, you can join our Patreon too at patreon.com slash dumdumdice. Thanks to them, and a little bit of thanks to you. <laughs>